The news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa ratified and issued law number no. 9 of 2018 on the ratification of an agreement between Bahrain and Tunisia on administrative mutual assistance to prevent probe and penalize custom violations signed in Tunis on the 21st of October of 2016 and associated with this law. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and ministers have been tasked to implement the provisions of this law which becomes effective from the next day after its promulgation in the official gazette. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received two written letters from the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud of Saudi Arabia, to invite him to attend the 29th Arab Summit, which will be held in Saudi Arabia, and to attend the concluding ceremony of the Joint Military Drill, Joint Gulf Shield One, which will be held in the Eastern Province next month. The Saudi Ambassador to the Kingdom, Dr. Abdullah bin Abdul Malik Al Sheikh, delivered the letters to His Majesty the King at Sheikh Palace today. His Majesty the King expressed thanks and appreciation to the custodian of the two holy mosques wishing the Arab summit success in bolstering joint Arab work. He hailed the role of Saudi Arabia led by the custodian of the two holy mosques in supporting Arab and Islamic solidarity for the interests of the Arab and Islamic nations. His Majesty highlighted the deep-rooted relations between the two countries which are based on cooperation and coordination in all fields. He expressed thanks and appreciation to the custodian of the two holy mosques for the invitation to the concluding ceremony of the joint drill, expressing pride in the participation of Bahrain Defense Force which stems from the kingdom's belief and continuous military cooperation to face challenges. He also commended the leading role of Saudi Arabia in defending Arab and Islamic causes. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Sheikh Palace His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Chairman of the High Committee for Natural Resources and Economic Security, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa on the occasion of the discovery of the largest reserve of light truck oil and gas in the history of Bahrain. Now the meeting began with the recitation of verses from the Holy Quran. His Majesty the King delivered a speech in which he stated that Allah has blessed the kingdom and its people with the ability to progress and excel in giving. He noted the pivotal role played by the forefathers in shaping a civilization and humane renaissance which has made Bahrain a leading pioneer in the fields of medicine, education and industry, becoming an important center for finance, trade and health services. His Majesty added that the oil sector has been an integral part of the kingdom's march with the first first well discovered in 1932 in the field of Bahrain during the era of the late grandfather, His Highness Sheikh Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He added that since that historic discovery of oil, the state has always been keen to harness its resources and to develop its production in order to benefit the progress of the nation and the prosperity of the Bahraini citizen. His Majesty stated that it is time for Bahrain to move beyond the causes behind the non-discovery of any new field since the first discovery as the desire to increase growth has always been greater and deeper. He highlighted that the work which has been implemented throughout this period is in parallel with the development of the national economy to create and launch a package of the largest projects in the sectors of oil and gas, infrastructure, transport and information technology in order to ensure opportunities for all the people of this homeland. His Majesty added that with this great discovery, Bahrain finds itself in a new era through which work must be conducted with determination and resolve to continue development by adhering to effective programs and initiatives to increase non-oil revenues and optimize the allocation of financial resources to achieve sustainable economic growth. He emphasized the pivotal role of citizens in continuing to build their nation and achieve its progress and advancement, driven by their sincerity and ambition. He also expressed pride in the efforts of young Bahrainis who have been very successful in achieving these results.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه سيدي صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد نائب القائد الأعلى النائب الأول لرئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظه الله ورعاه أصحاب السمو أصحاب المعالي والسعادة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته خير ما نبدأ به تلاوة عطرة من القرآن الكريم يتلوها على مسامعنا القارئ علي صلاح عمر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل لعبادي الذين آمنوا يقيموا الصلاة وينفقوا مما رزقناهم سرا وعلانية من قبل أن يأتي يوم لا بيع فيه ولا خلال الله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وأنزل من السماء ماء فأخرج به من الثمرات رزقا لكم وسخر لكم الفلك لتجري في البحر بأمره وسخر لكم الأنهار وسخر لكم الشمس والقمر دائبين وسخر لكم الليل والنهار وآتاكم من كل ما سألتموه وإن تعدوا نعمة الله لا تحصوها إن الإنسان لظلوم كفار صدق الله العظيم يتفضل سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه بإلقاء كلمة بهذه المناسبة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين صاحب السمو الملكي ولي العهد أصحاب السمو الحضور الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وأن الفضل بيد الله يؤتيه من يشاء والله ذو الفضل العظيم صدق الله العظيم لقد أنعم الله بكرمه وتوفيقه على مملكة البحرين وأبنائها منذ مئات السنين بالقدرة على التقدم والتميز في العطاء ولقد كان لآبائنا وأجدادنا الدور الرائد في صياغة نهضة حضارية وإنسانية حققت للبحرين الريادة والسبق في مجالات الطب والتعليم والصناعة وأن تكون مركزا هاما للمال والتجارة والخدمات الصحية ولم يكن مجال النفط بعيدا عن تلك الإرادة الوطنية الجادة حيث تم اكتشاف أول بئر في حق للبحرين في عام 1932 في عهد الجد صاحب العظم الشيخ حمد بن عيسى الخليفة يرحمه الله والتي حرصت إدارة الدولة ومنذ ذلك الاكتشاف النفطي التاريخي 
على تسخير موارده وتنمية مشتقاته بما يعود بالنفع على مسيرة الوطن ولرفاه المواطن البحرين وبالنظر إلى ما مر به القطاع النفطي من نمو على مدى عقوده الأولى إلا أن وبعد تغيير في السياسات التي اتخذها المسؤولين عن القطاع آنذاك أدت إلى ضعف الخطط الموجهة لاستكشاف المزيد من الموارد الطبيعية وكانت الحجة ندرة الفرص الواعدة واليوم قد حان الوقت لتجنب ما تسبب في عدم اكتشاف أي حقل جديد منذ الاكتشاف الأول حيث أن رغبتنا لزيادة وتيرة النمو كانت دوما أكبر وأعمق من واقع الحال واستطعنا ولله الحمد من خلال عزمنا وإصرارنا بالتوجيه نحو تكثيف خطط البحث والتنقيب كما أجرينا الاتصالات المستمرة وعقدنا اجتماعات مكثفة وشجعنا الرغبات الوطنية الصادقة في إنجاح تلك الجهود ليأتينا الرد اليوم على تساؤلنا لنفرح معكم بهذا الإنجاز الكبير لبلادنا باكتشاف أكبر حقل للنفط والغاز في تاريخنا ولنكتب بذلك قصة نجاح جديدة لقدرتنا على تطويع التحديات وتحويلها لإنجازات فالشكر لله أولا وأخيرا والحمد له سبحانه الذي بنعمته تتم الصالحات ولعل من الضروري أن نتوجه بالشكر والتقدير لأشقائنا على ما قدموا ويقدمون من برامج الدعم التي هي خير معين لنا في استمرار مشاريع التنمية والتطوير ونؤكد في هذا السياق بأن ما يقدمه الأشقاء من دعم مستمر لتحقيق الاستدامة في استقلالية اقتصادنا الوطني لهو دين في أعناقنا لن ننسى فضله وكما قال الله عز وجل ولا تنسوا الفضل بينكم صدق الله العظيم وهو أمر سيمكننا من استعادة موقعنا لكل ما هو خير لهم وللجميع ولقد عملنا طوال تلك الفترة وبشكل موازي لتنمية الاقتصاد الوطني باستحداث وتدشين حزمة من أكبر المشاريع في قطاعات النفط والغاز والبنية التحتية والمواصلات وتقنية المعلومات ليصب ذلك في خلق الفرص الواعدة لجميع أبناء الوطن ومع هذا الاكتشاف الكبير نجد أنفسنا أمام عهد جديد نعمل من خلاله وبكل عزم وإصرار لمواصلة التطوير والتنمية بالتمسك في تنفيذ البرامج والمبادرات الفعالة لزيادة الإيرادات غير النفطية والتوظيف الأمثل للموارد المالية وصولا لرؤيتنا في تحقيق النمو الاقتصادي المستدام الحضور الكريم إنما تم الإعلان عنه من اكتشاف لأكبر حقل في تاريخ البحرين هو بشرة خير سيكون لها صدى إيجابي على تعزيز مكانة المملكة في العالم واستمرار مسيرة التنمية الشاملة لصالح جميع أبنائها وستحكي عنه 
بكل فخر أجيالها القادمة ونود في هذا السياق أن نؤكد على الدور المحوري للمواطنين في الاستمرار في بناء وطنهم وتحقيق تقدمه ونهضته يدفعهم إلى ذلك إخلاصهم وطموحهم وبإدارة أهل البحرين الطيبين سنقوم باستثمار هذه الموارد التي نتطلع بأن تكون نبضا متجددا يربط الطموحات والأمان بالعمل الجاد الذي يحقق لمملكة البحرين ومواطنيها الخير والازدهار وفي الختام لا يسعنا إلا أن نعرب عن فخرنا بما تبذله السواعد البحرينية الشابة من إصرار وعزم وإسهامات نجحت بشكل باهر في تحقيق هذه النتائج الطيبة وبهذه المناسبة التاريخية الهامة يسعدنا أن نتقدم بالشكر الجزيل لابننا البار صاحب السمو الملكي ولي العهد رئيس اللجنة العليا للثروات الطبيعية والأمن الاقتصادي ومعالي الشيخ محمد بن خليفة آل خليفة وزير النفط وفريق العمل في الهيئات والشركات الوطنية للنفط الذين ساهموا في تحقيق هذا الإنجاز وكانوا موفقين على من سبقهم في هذا المجال ونتطلع إلى استمرار جهودهم المشكورة لمتابعة استثمار هذا الإنجاز لصالح الوطن والمواطنين نسأل الله عز وجل أن يحفظ البحرين وأهلها وأن يديم علينا جميعا نعمته والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته His Royal Highness the Crown Prince presented His Majesty a sample of the production of the Khalij al Bahrain Basin. His, for their parts, the attendees congratulated His Majesty the King and expressed pride. <laughs> والبرامج الغادمة إن شاء الله كذلك تشارك وتكون بعد جزء من نفس السياسة لكن البحرين بلد خير وأهلها الطيبين يستاهلون كل خير وهذا من رب العالمين الله كتب أن تكون النقطة الأولى والانطلاقة الأولى من البحرين في 32 وكذلك النقطة الثانية بعد في هذا الوقت الصعب ولكن اللي بإذن الله هذا الاستكشاف سيسهل كثير من الأمور اللي الدولة تحتاجها إلى تشجيع الحياة الكريمة أما الاقتصاد فالاقتصاد لله الحمد ينمو بنموه الطبيعي الكبير والناس تعمل ويجب أن يحافظون على هذا الروح روح العمل وقبول هذا التحدي لاستمرارهم في نموهم المعروف اليوم بنسبة عالية جدا مقارنة بدول كثيرة 
واصبح العمل بالنسبه للمواطن البحريني وللجميع في الواقع اللي في البحرين امر مقدس الانسان يحب يصبح ويداوم ويحب يرجع كذلك للعمل ولا يحب التوقف ولا حد الان ثقافه انه يتوقف ويبدا حياه جديده يمكن ما وصلناها 100% وصلنا الى يمكن ان شاء الله ان شاء الله 60% قبول عند المواطن والا الهم الاول والاخير انه يخدم ويستمر اما مساله ان يترك العمل ويتقاعد هذا لحد الان ما دخلت 100% في الثقافه البحرينيه الا يمكن عند اللي بدوا من الصغر في مؤسسات منظمه كبابكو شركه النفط مؤسسات الامنيه بعض الشركات المنتجه لان من البدايه المعامله معامله احتراف يعني تؤدي الى احترافيه وتؤدي الى احنا نامل طبعا ان هذا هذه الروح تعم الجميع الا ان العالم هذا اصبح عالم عالم الاحتراف في كل مجال والحمد لله هذا انفتح مجال اكبر لشبابنا انهم يعملون في هالاحتراف واحسن جواب اذا واحد لا سمح الله استصغر عمل زميل له في عمل ما الجواب يكون لزميله ترى هذا احتراف لكن لا الحمد البحرين بأهلها مبروكة وتستحق كل خير وأهل الخليج عموما كذلك يستحقون كل خير وهم ما قصروا عن البحرين وأنا ذكرت لكم في الكلمة يعني دعموا البحرين في هالفترة اللي احتاجت الدعم وهذا على كل حال هو يكون إلا دين في الرقبة حتى ولو ما قيل هذا الكلام ولا اتفق عليه ولكن الإنسان هذا طبع يقبل الشيء علشان يقوم بواجبه وإذا تمكن رد الجميل هذا يعني من القيم وأعتقد البحرين هذا اللي يسوونه دائما أنا كل اللي عرفتهم درست وياهم واشتغلت وياهم يحب يقوم بالواجب ويزيد على الواجب فمشكورين مرة أخرى والحقيقة بعد كلمة حق بالنسبة للي أسسوا التأسيس الجيد في مجال صناعة النفط وكانوا محترفين إلى أقصى درجة ونذكر جد أنا أذكر شخصيا أن مراكز التدريب المهنية كانت في شركة النفط هي الأساس في الحكومة عندنا طبعا دكتور عبد الحسين هو من الأوائل اللي مؤخرا هو بالأوائل الأوائل اللي درسوا فنيا ووصل إلى مواصيل عالية جدا بسبب التدريب الجيد هو في الواقع يشكر لأن أسس لهذا الإنجاز. Following the speech, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa took a commemorative photograph with the attendees on the occasion. For their part, the attendees congratulated His Majesty the King and expressed pride in this national achievement made in the prosperous era of His Majesty. They hailed His Majesty's directives to prioritize operations for the discovery of oil, to employ this vital resource, to serve the development process for the benefit and prosperity of Bahrain and its people. They also affirmed that this discovery supports the initiatives of comprehensive economic development and the march of development under the leadership of His Majesty. Steve King.
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa praised the distinguished contributions of his advisor for media affairs, Nabil bin Ya'qub Al Hamar. This came in a congratulatory message from His Majesty to Al Hamar on being honored by the UAE Vice President, Prime Minister, and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. Al Hamar was named the Media Personality of the Year during the Arab Media Forum's seventh edition held in Dubai. The media advisor expressed his utmost gratitude and appreciation to His Majesty's congratulations, which he considers a motivation to achieve more for the kingdom. He affirmed that his win was a confirmation of Bahraini media status at the Arab and international levels thanks to the directives of His Majesty the King and his reforms that boosted the Bahraini citizens' creativity and excellence in all fields. The advisor wished His Majesty lasting good health and happiness for the welfare and prosperity of the country and its people. The Interior Minister, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, received today Saudi Arabia's Under Secretary of the Ministry of Interior, head of the Saudi side of the meeting of the Joint High Security Committee between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, Dr. Nasser bin Abdul Aziz Al Dawood, in the presence of the head of the Bahraini side, Chief of Public Security, Major General Tariq Hassan Al Hassan, in the Joint Committee's meeting and members of the committee from both countries. The Minister welcomed the Saudi Under Secretary and the accompanying delegation, praising the depth of historic relations between the two countries. Under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. He expressed appreciation of Saudi Arabia's supporting stances of Bahrain and its security. The minister affirmed the importance of the meeting which was agreed upon during the visit of Saudi Arabia's Minister of Interior, His Royal Prince Abdul Aziz bin Saud bin Naif Al Saud to Bahrain in January to discuss the issues agreed upon and enhance cooperation and coordination in the security field and build on what has been achieved in the course of security cooperation to face security challenges and rapid challenges in the regional and international arena. For his part, the Undersecretary conveyed the greetings of the Saudi Interior Minister and his affirmation of the Ministry's readiness to provide the necessary and required support to Bahrain to enhance security and stability. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa delegated the Minister of Foreign Affairs Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa to offer His Majesty's sincere condolences today at Al Budaya Palace in Sharjah to the member of the Supreme Council and ruler of Sharjah, His Highness Dr. Sheikh Sultan bin Mohammed Al Qasmi, the Crown Prince and Deputy Ruler of Sharjah, His Highness Sheikh Sultan bin Mohammed bin Sultan Al Qasmi, and Sheikh Salim bin Mohammed bin Sultan Al Qasmi on the demise of Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed bin Sultan Al Qasmi. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also conveyed the condolences of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, as well as the condolences of the people of Bahrain to His Highness Dr. Sheikh Sultan bin Hamad Al Qasmi and the family members of the deceased. The Minister prayed to Allah to rest his soul in an eternal peace. For his part, His Highness Dr. Sheikh Sultan bin Hamad Al Qasmi expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his sincere sentiments, which reflected the deep rooted relations between Bahrain and and the United Arab Emirates. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, attended the ceremony honoring the winners of the Arab Journalism Award for 2018, which was held today in Dubai under the patronage of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President, Prime Minister of the UAE, and Ruler of Dubai, which is part of activities of the Arab Media Forum with the participation of a number of media professionals and representatives of many Arab and international channels. The Minister of Foreign Affairs expressed his pride in honoring His Majesty the King's advisor for media affairs, Nabil bin Ya'qub Al Hamar, in recognition of his constant efforts in the development of Arab media, noting that it is a tribute to the Kingdom of Bahrain. He emphasized the outstanding level that the Bahraini press has reached regionally and internationally as it assures a bright era and enjoys a wide space of freedom that aims towards further progress and prosperity. Foreign Affairs Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa took part in the 17th edition of the Arab Media Forum, which was launched today in the UAE. The event is held under the patronage of the Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE, Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. Sheikh Khalid expressed his sincere thanks to Sheikh Mohammed, congratulating him on the series of successes and achievements that the Media Forum has made due to the care it receives from the UAE Vice President since its launch in 2000. The Foreign Affairs Minister called on to exert greater efforts to 
face misleading media through representing facts in a professional manner and thwart the attempts of negatively affecting our societies and countries in their development march. He pointed that legitimate media is in constant development, which some websites and television channels have made the spread of deceit and fabrications as their profession. The minister stressed the strength of the relations between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, asserting that these ties go back to the era of the late King Abdulaziz Al Saud. May he rest in peace, highlighting that this old allegiance is based on family bonds, a unified stance, and a shared coordination. He continued to state that the development and openness Saudi Arabia is witnessing is the most important event that is taking place in the region, adding that such development is based on the solid foundations laid by the forefathers of Saudi Arabia. The minister went on to state that these advancements will unleash the Saudi people's energies in the fields of politics, economics, social and art, amongst others. Sheikh Khalid also hailed the relations that ties Bahrain and the UAE, emphasizing that these fraternal relations are ever-growing, expressing pride in the advancements the UAE is witnessing. In this regard, the foreign affairs minister recalled the great roles and efforts exerted by the late His Highness Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan, praising the efforts of the president of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the vice president and prime Minister of the UAE, ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and the Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, in bringing renaissance and prosperity to the UAE. Sheikh Khalid affirmed the absence and confidence in the current regime of the Islamic Republic of Iran and its aggressive approach, especially with its occupation of the three islands of the UAE and its attempts to control and spread its influence in the region. The minister noted that it is impossible to talk about about a solution to the Qatari crisis in light of the current situation and circumstances as there are transgressions and confidence that have not been met and it is important to search for other solutions to deal with the issue. He stressed that the Gulf Cooperation Council is not threatened by the Qatari crisis and that the GCC is capable of dealing with it. The Minister of Foreign Affairs expressed his optimism about the future of relations between the countries of the region and the United States of America, noting the progress in these relations. Bahrain's National Oil and Gas Authority, NOGA, alongside international consultants De Gaulier and McNaughton, Halliburton and Schlumberger, today provided new details on the kingdom's largest ever discovery of oil and gas with tight oil amounting to at least 80 billion barrels. Halliburton stated that the discovery made within the 2,000 km square Khalij al-Bahrain basin is located in shallow waters off the kingdom's west coast, close to a fully operational oil field with ready-to-connect two facilities, which provides potential for significant cost optimization. A separate discovery of significant gas reserves and two accumulations below Bahrain's main gas reservoir has been confirmed. Extensive work has already been carried out to evaluate in-place volumes. The first well in the drilling program is planned to produce in August and over the next two years focus will be given to maximizing production and commercial efficiency. Announcing the size and content of the discovered resources, Bahrain's Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, said that D. Golier and McNaughton's and Halliburton's independent Appraisals have confirmed Noga's find of highly significant quantities of oil in place for Khalij al Bahrain, with tight oil amounting to at least 80 billion barrels and deep gas reserves in the region of 10 to 20 trillion cubic feet. The minister said that the agreement has been reached with Halliburton to commence drilling on two further appraisal wells in 2018 to further evaluate reservoir potential, optimize completions, and initiate long term production. Speaking at today's press conference, De Gaulier and McNaughton Senior Vice President Dr. John Hornbroke said that oil in place of 80 billion barrels is based on a P50 resource estimate. Dr. Hornbrook added that the discovery breaks new ground for the Bahrain oil and gas industry using established technologies. Schlumberger spokesperson noted that the positive tests well result have successfully demonstrated the productivity of the significant resource and BAPCO has succeeded in flowing high quality oil from the wells during the testing and flow back phases. He added that based on the core analysis carried out on several wells, the formation could be classified at the edge of the conventional, unconventional type of plays. Babco chief exploration geologist in charge of the discovery, Yahya Al-Ansari, added that the presence of a layer with moderate conventional reservoir properties on top of an organic-rich source rock creates a unique self-sourcing and trapping system, enhancing production and economic viability. The confirmation of the significant resource highlights the vast exploration and production potential and opportunities in Bahrain. The newly discovered resource, which officials expect to be on production within five years, is expected to provide significant and long-term positive benefits to the kingdom's economy, both directly and indirectly through downstream activities in related industries. 
Noga added that the next stage of development will focus on ensuring robust frameworks. Data and terms are in place to facilitate further activities and commercial opportunities with international partners. It's my great pleasure to welcome you all. Uh, we are here to add a little bit of information to the already announced discovery uh, of uh, light oil and the discovery of gas. Uh, as a quick brief, uh, the Arabian Peninsula has two main oil systems, oil and gas systems. They have given us the largest oil and gas fields in the world. Uh, the oil system is called the Jurassic Total Petroleum System. Uh, and the Bahrain, Khalij al Bahrain Basin Discovery is basically uh, the oil system that generated uh, the majority of the uh, conventional oil fields around. We, uh, we have uh, analyzed various wells that have penetrated the formation and we have last year drilled an exploration well that flowed light oil to the surface uh, with associated gas and have worked with uh, various companies we have with us today, Deegoyle or McNaughton, who have certified the in-place reserves. Uh, after the discovery, there is a phase of appraisal. We have already begun the work and uh, have signed a letter of intent with Halliburton to begin drilling two new wells in the basin, uh, hopefully to appraise the performance of the rock. Uh, there are certain advantages which we will talk to you about in the formation that gives this more benefit uh, than usual tight oil formations uh, around the world. The other discovery is a tight gas discovery below the Bahrain field. Uh, we have been working on it for a number of years and are now at final stages of evaluating bids from both uh, Schlumberger and Halliburton. Uh, we are very confident on uh, the ability to produce gas at competitive rates uh, and prices. Uh, Bahrain, as a small country, is a very large consumer of gas. We depend on it for industrial uh, sectors and for power and water desalination. Uh, so it's very exciting to add uh, a new resource to the Bahrain gas field that has been furnishing Bahrain with uh, roughly half a TCF every year of natural gas. The reserves of gas stand in the range between 10 trillion cubic feet and 20 trillion cubic feet. Uh, the recoverable is, is of course uh, the appraisal stage which we will begin again this year. Uh, very exciting times for us in the hydrocarbon industry. A lot happening in upstream. Uh, we're also doing a lot in the downstream side, but that's uh, for another occasion. Uh, despite those two discoveries, work still continues on general exploration in the Bahrain territorial waters, both offshore and on the islands. We have some prospects with our, which are quite mature and will announce uh, Whenever we uh, have this is a, an unconventional resource, we need, we need more time. We have now, of course, evaluated the resource. We know the oil is there. What we need to prove is that producing it is going to be commercial. We need a little bit more time. We said give us five years. If we can do it earlier, we will try. Uh, the other discovery is, of course, the gas resource, which is a bit more advanced, and I think we stand uh, to be able to produce it hopefully this year. This will add uh, a good number of gas reserves to uh, Bahrain's uh, gas resources. The offshore discovery is super giant large and uh, it will require huge amounts of capital investment and activity, a lot more employment for all the Bahrainis and it'll, it'll bring a significant increase of revenue to the kingdom. The technology that we will use to develop the offshore um, discovery will be identical to what the United States uses to develop their unconventional shale, shale gas plays. It's, it's uncom unconventional, it's a different technologies, it will need a lot of uh, 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 technologies and operations and people actually to, to work on that, so I can see that this is going to be a, a, a very nice opening for, uh, for, uh, for work and jobs. 
Oil Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa and Transportation and Telecommunications Minister Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed toured the construction site of a fuel farm complex at an inspection visit. The complex is currently being built by BAC Jet Fuel Company in the vicinity of Bahrain International Airport. The ministers were briefed on the progress of the projects in the presence of the company board members, Bahrain Airport Company officials. The ministers were given a visual presentation of the various stages of the project. The ministers stressed the importance of finishing the project within the agreed upon deadline while maintaining the highest levels of quality to achieve the project's objectives. The ministers and their accompanying delegations inspected the fuel farm complex located in the northeast area of BIA where they listened to a detailed explanation of the project which houses three aviation fuel tanks with a capacity of 10,000 cubic meters each. The project's total area is 77,000 square meters in addition to its dedicated operational buildings. The minister affirmed that the building a fuel farm complex within BIA's vicinity follows the directive of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, to relocate the fuel tanks from Arad area and Harag's governorate. He noted the importance of the project is due to its role in developing the oil and gas sector in the kingdom and in raising the efficiency of the airport. The Minister of Transportation noted that the fuel complex is an essential, essential part of the strategy behind the airport modernization program, which has the support of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister. It also forms a part of GFG strategic project which aims to stimulate sustainable economic growth and generate new revenue streams. Under the patronage of Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, the events of the World Women Wellbeing Forum commenced today in the presence of the Minister of Oil and President of the Babco Board of Directors, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, and the Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women, Halal Ansari. The Minister of Oil delivered a speech in which he expressed thanks and gratitude to the SCW, led by Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika, hailing her role in supporting ambition international initiatives and her patronage of the events. He stated Babco initiated the establishment of an institutional framework that includes key criteria for an ideal health program and the company to develop the life quality of women in the fields of occupational health and safety at work. The Minister of Oil called the public and private sector to adopt this initiative to become a national model for occupational health and safety applications in support of women. He announced forming an equal opportunity committee in Babco to set policies, criteria and plans related to applying equal opportunity principles principles and achieve complete integration of women needs in the company. The Secretary General of SEW hailed Bobco's initiatives to organize the forum, which supports one of the fields of the National Women Development Plan, adding that Bahraini women's health is the, among the priorities of the Council. She noted that the interest in women enables them to continue their professional march in various fields. She expressed thanks and appreciation to the Minister of Oil for forming an equal opportunity committee in the company. She also congratulated His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince on the discovery of the largest oil field in the history of the kingdom, affirming that it will provide many promising opportunities for women and will support the Council's goal of intensifying women presence in the industrial sector. The Executive Vice President and the President of the Forum's Organizing Committee, Ibrahim Abdullah Talib, also delivered a speech in which he affirmed the importance of the forum which aims to enhance the meaning of health and safety for women who are a key partner in the development march. World Women Wellbeing 2018 is a step to understand wellness among women, the importance of maintaining health and safety in a working environment as well as having a focus on mental, emotional, physical and spiritual well-being. The forum talks in particular about the implications of uh, occupational uh, health and safety within the organization and how it relates and directly uh, affects the participation of women within the organization. It directly relates to the efforts of the Kingdom of Bahrain, so to speak, in the matter of uh, implementing our national plan for the advancement of Bahraini women, whereby this particular national plan uh, clearly outlines a main element or main priority that talks about quality of life and therefore a topic such as occupational health and safety uh, directly relates to that particular um, element within our national plan whereby we hope that through uh, let's say forums and events such as today we will be able to know more about uh, what is happening on the ground and how policies and services can be later improved. The forum focused on some main criteria for the company's ideal health program to improve the quality of life of women in the areas of occupational health and safety in the workplace. These criteria included commitment to safety, health food, 
social networking, and launching initiatives to promote women's participation and capacity development. By ensuring that you're addressing the well-being issues which relate to either their health or quite frankly the way that the business world see it is linking that with the productivity, with improvement in the organization and with the bottom line profitability. So really the way that this is linked together when it comes to an organization is you have to truly believe that taking care of women, well-being, issues and challenges will certainly result in the success of organization. The aim of the event is to enhance the quality lives of women, support their participation in the national economy, provide them with the appropriate environment to strengthen their leading role and their contributions to the kingdom. Reporting for Bahrain International, I am Hamad Youssef. The Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, Engineer Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed, conducted an inspection visit to the passenger terminal to witness the preparations of the airport to welcome the large influx of international visitors who have begun to arrive to the kingdom to attend this year's edition of the Grand Prix Bahrain Gulf Air Formula One, which is on one of the biggest and most prominent events in the kingdom. The minister was accompanied by the CEO of Bahrain Airport Company, Mohammed Yusuf al bin Falah, and a number of officials. The minister praised the logistic preparations provided by the Directorate of Operations at the airport, the Directorate of Nationality Passports and Residence, uh, Customs Affairs, and the Airport Police at the Ministry of Interior. The 2017 Formula One Grand Prix witnessed a record number of visitors, with 33,000 attending during race days and 93,000 over the weekend. The numbers are expected to double this year in light of the unprecedented growth in the popularity of motorsports and its races in the region, particularly the Formula One race in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Minister of Information Affairs and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Bahrain Institute for Political Development, Ali bin Mohammed al ramehi congratulated the advisor of His Majesty the King for Information Affairs, Nabil bin Ya'goub al-Hamar, on the occasion of winning the Media Personality of the Year Award at the Arab Media Forum held in Dubai. al ramehi affirmed that the award is an honoring of Bahraini journalism and media and the kingdom's leading status as a model of journalistic freedoms and media intellectual and cultural progress during the era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa. He hailed the positive initiatives of Al-Hamar and his honorable history as a pioneer of Bahraini and Arab journalism, commending his efforts in establishing Gulf News Agency, currently Bahrain News Agency, and the Ayam newspaper and its continuous role in developing the national journalistic and cultural movement. He affirmed the pride of the Ministry of Information Affairs, all its affiliates in national journalism, in the honoring of the advisor of His Majesty the King for Information Affairs, commending the keenness of the United Arab Emirates Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, on honoring remarkable Arab personalities and leaders in all fields. Bahrain maintains its position as the favorite venue for hosting the Formula One race coming up soon. The various ticket booths are witnessing continuous activity and wide public interest. More in this report with Hibab Abdel Afar. The global spotlight is once again focused on Bahrain, the favorite venue for hosting the Formula One race. The countdown for the Formula One Grand Prix is almost over, less than two days to go for one of the most unique experiences in Bahrain. For the 14th time, Bahrain International Circuit, the one-of-a-kind facility, earning itself the perfect tag of the home of motorsport in the Middle East, hosts the race with world-class preparations since 2004. Tickets are offered at a broad range of prices for fans of different budgets. Officials and salespeople are reporting great ticket sales along with great surprises. Ticket sales has been doing really good. Um, some of the stands are already uh, looking full. A few tickets here and there only left. And um, we are very pleased with the, with the reaction. For the first time, we are offering 20 F1 experiences to 20 winners from main grandstand and turn one. And they will have truck tour. Truck tour is actually riding the same truck that the drivers ride in, during the driver's parade. And they will go uh, around the track so that's for the first time in Bahrain and we are also offering a visit to the paddock everyone wants to see what's going on inside the paddock so this will happen this year we are having 20 winners and of course I'm, I'm urging everyone to actually buy their tickets and not miss this chance besides that and for the first time we are offering four grand prizes which will be full paid trip to Baku Grand Prix. We've been having a lot of customers coming from all ages, 
all coming for the Formula One and all its activities and concerts as well. Uh, you can get your tickets that goes uh, from 60 dinars all the way to 150 dinars, depending on the location. Whenever you pass by a Formula One booth, you'll find it busy with fans of all ages and categories, from Bahrain, the GCC, and different parts of the world, looking forward to experiencing an adventure like no other. I usually go every year. I attend all the events. Um, it's so interesting in general, you know, you go and have fun. And of course, I'm interested into uh, the Ferrari team, especially Vital. If he drives, we win, absolutely. Uh, Santana is coming this year. Ah, it's going to be amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm so looking forward to it. This year we have eight from our friends and groups, and we hope to see what uh, what's the news happen in this year and who will win. Formula One, I can't uh, wait for it. Very excited about it, and especially my son, he's a 13 year old, he's turning 13 soon. He's really waiting for it, for that uh, Formula One, so he's inviting all his friends also to come over. And it's a very fun activity, so uh, we will be enjoying it because Bahrain, uh, Formula One, everybody's waiting for it. Bahrain is ready, the cars are gearing up. The fans are awaiting an overdose of velocity, adrenaline and pure excitement all rolled into our world-class track along with a bundle of breathtaking events for all members of the family. By the beginning of April, you start to feel it in the air. It's the Formula One season. Everyone is excited and crazy about it. And tickets are almost sold out. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul -Ghafur.